So how does a laser scope work? A laser scope has uh, this gizmo looking thing uh, and you can move it around with uh, dragging it with R2 and it has an origin point and it draws a line out and if it hits something then it tells you about it out of the, the gadget itself. So a laser scope is just like a tripwire or like a security laser in entrapment or something like that, you know? So it has an origin point, which is normally on the center of the laser scope. So if I press triangle, it resets the gizmo, uh, but you can drag it out. And if you use R2 on the stalk, then you're changing uh, where it's pointing, the direction it's pointing. And you can use this end of the stalk as well. But you can't rotate it from the uh, origin. You can't use L2 on any of these things. It doesn't do anything. But if you drag it by the arrow, that's the this value here, the range, the core range, I'm going to call it. And then you have this, which changes the fall off. So at zero fall off, it's at the same uh, range as the arrow. And then the fall off value here is actually adding on to the end of the arrow. It has local space, which uh, so local space is on by default. If you turn it off, then if you if you rotate the uh, gadget, or if, if the gadget rotates for any reason, then it will still point in the same direction. Um, but if you, but the uh, position will still be relative to where the uh, gadget is. And then local space means as you rotate the gadget, the direction it's pointing will also rotate. So if you wanted to know if there's ground directly beneath you, you probably leave this off and point that down, so that it, even if your characters kind of um, pointing up or going downhill you still get data from what's directly beneath you. So when you scale the gadget or the gizmo then that scales the range itself. What else can it do? So what are these actually for? The range and the fall off. Well, let's point it at something. Let's use local mode. Let's point it at something. It can only detect sculpts. So let's add a sculpt and let's have it intersect with the sculpt uh, like that and as it intersects you can see if a hit happens then it gives you this little green extra gizmo which which has an arrow pointing away the, from the surface so if I change the angle of the surface that arrow actually points away from the angle of the surface which we'll have a look at later so if we make the the core shorter now you can make the fall off longer then we can have a number displayer so we can see what that gives us so put that there and this is the detected the equivalent of detected in a, in a trigger zone it sends a, a signal while it's hitting something so while it's not hitting anything hit something isn't uh, sending a signal then when it gets into the fall off it becomes a larger and larger value towards one it's like a percentage of how far along the fall off it is and then when it gets to the core range over here then it's just at one so you get this nice uh, fall off which it makes certain things really easy to uh, do and by the way the um, the value that is sending out of this is also represented on the front of the um, gadget itself so if you make that shorter like that give it some more fall off then you can see as it hits something further in the fall off a black bar appears and becomes further up the face of the gadget until it gets to the core and then it's full so it has this nice kind of visual feedback for you point at tags so if i add a tag uh here give it a name and I'll turn on point at tags and then this activates and you can type in the same name or you can use up and down on the d-pad through here and it'll um, it'll go through all the tags named tags in the scene basically so now it's pointing at that tag even though the tag is reached by the laser scope it doesn't actually hit a sculpt so all this is doing is saying point at a tag called G uh, so if we use this tag to aim it 
towards the sculpt. Now it's hitting the sculpt and it's sending out a value. And we can see that value there. But then when it's over here, it's still pointing at the tag, but it's not hitting a sculpt. So just a tag isn't enough to um, figure out if it's hitting something. You have to have a sculpt going on. If there are more than one tag, this goes for any such thing that aims at tags and stuff. Uh, it'll use the closest tag. So this one's closer. But then if I make it further away, it will use that one because that one's closer. Some gadgets have consider players as a switch on them and they all work similarly. So if we actually have a look at the what kinds of outputs we have, if you use a splitter, then you can wire something into it and it will change according to what kind of wire it receives. So this is a light bulb thing, which means player info. So this is player info and it has the ability to send a different value to for each player uh, and some other information so if you have consider players on this will behave this will give different values per player if you have consider players off then it will just send a one from all of them or or not one thing to remember with the laser scope is it doesn't count as detecting a thing it counts as hitting a thing so for things like this where it has a detected output where it has, um, if it's detected by a trigger zone, then it sends a signal. Um, it won't do that if it gets hit by a by the laser scope because it's not it's not actually detecting this object. It's it's hitting it, which is just counted differently. That's going to hit the sculpt. So we're hitting a sculpt and it's sending values from all of these things, uh, which means it just uses that value when you just use it for other, th other things it kind of defaults to the positive value um, if we use consider players then it only sends one out of not player owned because this isn't considered player owned player owned is a is a whole other thing which I won't get into right now but the the easiest example you could use is a puppet so when a puppet is possessed then it is owned by that player. So let's point the laser scope at the puppet. So that's hitting the puppet and sending a value, but it's not currently player owned. So let's go to test mode and possess that puppet. Now I'm possessing it, I am player one, and it's sending a value from player one because the sculpt that it's hitting, or the collision thing that it's hitting, um, is owned, quote unquote, owned by player one. And that's about all you need to know for this thing right here. So normally that's off, and I assume that's better for performance because it defaults to being off. Um, but then if you turn it on, you can get that extra data. I'd like to thank Evil Kimao, Jason AC, Hyper Dream Surfer, and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Check out tapjars.com to find out how you can support me in helping Dreams creators. Thanks for your consideration and I'll see you in the next one.